Good morning, friends. This is Teresa from Star Stylist Homestead. Well, we've got a couple new ones today. This one's kind of funky. Check this out. You see that slurry in there? A nasty, huh? Well, this is for my potatoes. It is a tablespoon cornstarch to almost a half a cup of water. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put a little bit more water in here. Because that's kind of thick and I don't want it that thick. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let me show you here. I cut up my potatoes. These are going to be making nice crispy fries. So I'm putting all my potatoes in there. And I'll throw that little piece in there. And I'm going to stir this up with my hands to get that all over my potatoes. I probably could. Oh, there's another piece. Could have used another one. <laughs> Potato, that is. But I'm really just trying this recipe out. So then what we want to do, I already sprayed my pan over here. I'm just going to turn around. See, and then I have this all over my hands. And I'm going to put oil on my pan. A couple tablespoons. Yes, spray and oil. And just maneuver that. I guess there's something in the spray to keep it non-stick. But there's also something in the spray, and I don't know what it's called. I guess you could look it up. That helps the oil stay on the top so that, I don't know, your potatoes come out great. <laughs> These are supposed to come out really crunchy. So what I'm going to do... Now that they're all coated, let me put this down because I'm going to use both hands here. I don't want it all on there because I only have two potatoes. I'm just going to lay these in my pan. There's nothing else besides the slurry in my potatoes. And you want to keep some room in between. And these, this, you can use the big chunk fat potatoes. I made up a little too much because I just wanted to try this recipe. And it's going to go in an oven, a 425 oven. This is really nasty. But if they come out as good as I think they're going to, it'll be worth it. And you don't have to get this all off. It'll all melt in there. You just want them coated with it and my oven is on 425 heating up yeah I actually started it today who doesn't like crispy french fries right no oh, this pan was perfect for these so yeah we put these in at 425 on the bottom rack always on the bottom rack and because mine are smaller, I'm going to check them and, oh, and we're going to cover them. I'm not even going to be able to shut you off, so hold on a second. I've got to get this out off my hands. Sorry about that, guys. I know the, loud, the water's loud with this microphone on my arm. Okay. We're going to get aluminum foil and cover the top of it before we put it in. Hold on. I'll grab a piece. And then we're going to let that cook. Well, mine are smaller, so I'm going to let it cook for about 10 minutes. And it's going to steam them. Now watch. Is this not big enough? Yes. Perfect. The aluminum foil, foil will steam them so that it cooks the inside first, you know, because you don't want your french fries all brown and raw inside. So, here we go. I'm going to put it in the oven and put a timer on for 10 minutes. Start. Okay. And today, what we're making, again, another recipe with my ugly chicken. 
I'm going to do a double recipe of this too. So I have two of my ugly chickens out. And I already started getting some stuff together here. Um, I, oh, I started. Never finished because I got distracted with that. Um, my onions and I had started my garlic. So because I'm doing a double recipe, I'm going to cut up two onions and cook them. And I save this. I save all the peelings from this so that um, I can make my broth. My next broth is going to be a chicken broth with my onions. I, because I have, I did all my vegetable broth already. So I just throw them in the freezer in a Ziploc bag. All of it, this and everything, makes wonderful broth. Why pay for it? Especially the price they're going up to, right? So anyway, let me cut up these onions and get rid of this onion thing and get my pans ready. And uh, I'll be back to show you what's next and tell you what it is. Hey guys, 10 minutes. This went off. I just want to show you what they look like. Let me pull this down because this pan's really hot. See, that's all melting off of there. So now, I'm going to stick them in the oven, bottom rack, for another 10 minutes like that. And I'm guessing on the time just because I, they're not real big fries. Because um, it's usually about 18 minutes. So I'm going to put the timer. And that should start browning the bottom. Then we're going to take them out, flip them over, and do it another 10, 12 minutes, whatever it takes. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys. I'm going to open my chicken. Mmm. You always make sure you hear the pop and smell it. Pop. Mmm. And smell it. Now, I'm going to separate this because I need... Oh, and by the way, I'm making chicken croquettes. And I'm making a double recipe so that I can freeze half of them. Um, so I've got my garlic. I use four cloves of garlic. I'm not a huge garlic person, so that's what the recipe calls for four. I use two each. Um, onion calls for one medium onion. I cut up two and ended up putting half of one away because that's a lot of onion too. I think mine might have been a little bit bigger. I have my chicken because you need shredded chicken. Um, two shredded chicken breasts, so four. I'm using this. So each one, if, I, if it were a breast, would probably be a chicken a nice size chicken breast so I'm using both but I need um, I have my oil in my pan over here and not enough of it I'm gonna throw my onions in here and get them translucent then we'll add our garlic in um, calls for red and green chilies I don't have red and green chilies I'm gonna skip skip them I guess I could do jalapenos Although it would look pretty, wouldn't it? Nah, I don't want to touch those. Okay, I want my juice. So let's use this. I just dumped that, put my thing in there. I need a half a cup of chicken stock. So I need a cup of chicken stock. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. One cup of chicken stock. And that means I can save this chicken stock and the rest of this one for later. So we'll set that aside. Let me put my onions in over here. That's got to be warm, right? Ah, could have heated up a little bit more. That's all right. Turn that up just a little bit there. Put my garlic over here, and while I have you, uh, let's do them in here. 
you need two eggs, two egg yolks, and two egg whites. So I'm going to separate my eggs. Let me put you down here so you can see what I'm doing. Egg yolks are going to go in the recipe. Egg whites are going to be at the end when we start coating them. And the other thing, because these are usually fried, and you guys know how I feel these days about fried. It seems like everything I do is fried. So I'm going to attempt to bake them. Wow, that egg white don't want to come off, huh? There we go. And I'm doubling, so four. All righty. This actually, you, you get everything together and the recipe looks easy enough. So, I wanted to have everything ready for you, but I was doing the, um, ugh. This is almost as bad as touching the whole chicken. <laughs> um, so that you guys could see how easy it was. Let me wash. Shut some of these cabinets here. Okay. Um, I hope those potatoes come out. <laughs> get rid of this. And we'll grab this. I guess we can just chit chat, right? Have my fork out. Let's grab our ugly chicken. <laughs> Need that bone. Those over there. You see that bone just pop? <laughs> Look at that. Which is okay. I just don't want to dump it in because I don't want all the juice in there. So let me use my fork. I guess I could just strain the juice out, but why bother if I can just leave it in the jar? I don't want to be using the fat either. Not for this, anyway. And to be honest with you guys, I have literally never had one of these before. Oops, wrong pile. Have you? And maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. Croquette? Croquet? <laughs> no, I think that's the game. I'm having a blast doing all these. Oh, jeez. See? I'm not paying attention. I'm putting my meat over there and my junk in here. Not that it's junk. Listen, I'd probably eat the bones if this is the last thing on earth. And this. That's perfect. Look at all that meat. Sheesh. You know I was going to have a bone in there. I probably won't even need that whole other thing of chicken. And my onions. Oh, and I chop my onions up pretty small. You know, because these are going to be, okay, these are going to be um, little round balls. Wow, guys. I'm going to leave them just for another, I'm going to leave them on that side for another two minutes. Because I like crispy, you guys know that. Those are coming up good. That's a bone. Look at all that chicken. That's just legs. All legs. There these up. 
so that I can stick them back in the oven again. You can see I already flipped one. Look at these. Let's see. I'll flip them with this. Wow, look at that. That stuff really worked. <laughs> If you get them together, they stick together. And you notice I didn't put um, salt on them. You put salt on when they come out of the oven. And I guess this is why you want them like this, so that you can flip. Because <laughs> some of mine are rounded, but that's no big deal. Now, I could have left them longer, but because I'm cooking so many things at once... Check that out, guys. Let me see. I'll get you a little closer. I don't know if you can see them. But look, those are coming up nice. I could have left them a little longer. So what I'll do is I'll put these back in the oven, and I'll leave those for 12 minutes now. Okay, and my onions because you don't want them completely done. Uh, uh, I think I'll leave them another minute or two. And then throw that garlic in, because this is going to come together really quick now. So I want to have everything ready. So I will be back. All right, guys. I got all my chicken done. I'm going to place that over here. And... You over here because my onions are plenty done. I'm going to throw my garlic in here. And as you know, definitely going to be in there for about a minute before we start adding. Um, okay. I'm going to grab my tablespoon that. Because now we're going to need three tablespoons of flour, so six. Okay. We're going to make a roux out of this. Mm. You know, when you start smelling it. Three, make sure. <laughs> yeah. Four, five, six. Okay, there's my six. Let's start mixing that in. And then my chicken stock is going to go in here. this over here. We just want to cook up that flour. Boy, that sucked up all that oil, didn't it? Okay, I'm going to put my chicken stock. That's really going to be yummy after cooking in that chicken all that time. Now we're going to cook this for a minute or so. And then we're going to add our chicken to this, which is why I wanted to get that all together. Then we're going to go on to the next mixture. Ooh, those fries look good. Might help if I keep that on the stove, huh? You 
you don't want to stop stirring this because you don't want it to burn. I'm sure you all know that. Sorry, I'm just concentrating here. Okay, I'm going to stir this in and get this all mixed and combined. And then we're going to set this aside and let it cool. But I'm going to let this cook up just a bit and incorporate. Get that roux mixed in with the chicken. Tell me that ugly chicken doesn't work perfect for this meal because ugly chicken shreds very easy. So now we know um, you know I should be saying canned chicken but Lisa said ugly chicken because it is ugly in the jar but it's just canned up chicken. So if you want to use the can from the store, the chicken from the store, um, I think you would probably need two for one, one recipe of this, a single recipe. But I say ugly chicken. Ever since I heard her say that, I'm like, I even mark it ugly chicken on the, when I can it, which I'm getting ready to do again. I have another bag out over there in a bowl sitting there waiting. It's defrosting right now. I just need to make room in my fridge to, to excuse me, to finish defrosting. All right. So now that's all combined. Um, you, oh, you know what? I want to put my salt and pepper now. So you want to put this to taste. So, that I when I can when I jarred up my chicken, I don't ever put spices or anything because I don't know what I'm gonna make out of it once I open it. So I just put all that salt and pepper in there, and of course I doubled my recipe, so I put a little extra. I can't wait to put these together. Let me taste. See, I have enough in there. Yeah, there's plenty in there. That tastes really good. Of course it does. Okay, I'm gonna take this off the burner. What timing, huh? We might be on a good time limit today because the fries are getting ready to come out. It's got two minutes, but let me check them real quick. I'll leave it the two minutes. Okay, now we have three and a half cups of mashed potatoes. I made some up today but i only made up it was too shy so i used my mashed potatoes from dinner last night and it gave me my three and a half cups um so now i need a big bowl and i used my bowl here comes the noise guys So here's my mashed potatoes. Put them in a bowl. You know the worst thing about cooking, as much as I've been cooking. God, I got a lot of dishes. <laughs> of course I do. I'm doing them five, six times a day. All right, so we have that. We need two tablespoons of unsalted butter. So four tablespoons. Let's see. There's two. <laughs> My excess. Oh, you can't even see. Hang on.
it's soft butter. I have it too close to the stove, too. Okay. Don't burn. I hear you going off. Okay, there's four tablespoons of butter. Let me put this aside and take out our french fries. My friends, put you down. That pan's too hot to hold. Look at these. Look. And you hear that? Now, I'm going to put them on a paper towel. Put this back. Get that excess oil off there. Oh, I can hear. Oh. Yeah. I can hear how crispy they are, guys. I can never get them crispy in the oven. Let's put some salt on them. Hmm. Those come out perfect. Oh. Yeah. Those are nice and crispy. Those call for uh russet potatoes. Oh, those are good. I used the red potatoes. And they're perfect on the inside. So, if you make them this size, the same, they're spinning. Um, I did 10 covered. And I would say 12 and 12 on each side. And those are good. And every one of them. I'm nice and crispy and done. Thumbs up on that one. Now I've got to share them with my husband. Oh, my. Is it all those? Okay. Let me clean this up here, and we'll get back to the other half. I'll be right back. All right, friends. I'm back. Of course, I had to shred my cheese. Because I used it all, so let's put you back over here. Um, get my use the rest of this cheese. So now I have my mashed potatoes in my bowl. Hang on, I'm get a new bag for my cheeses. Um, there we go. So. I have my mashed potato, and when we left before, I put my butter, four tablespoons, because it calls for two. Um, I'm going to put my four circles, <laughs> my egg yolks, how'd you like that one, into there, oh, into the mashed potatoes. Um, Lemon juice. We need half a cup of mozzarella cheese. So we're going to use generous cup. And then we need a half a cup of cheddar cheese. Boy, I tell you, that cheddar, when I use my fancy little thing, so there's a half doubled. Okay, and it calls for cilantro that I cannot find in my fridge. I think I need to clean that out. Um, and lemon juice. So let me get a cup of lemon juice. And we mix this up. See, it's easy enough. It's prepping everything, getting it all prepped. Okay. 
Okay. So you want to just make sure that's mixed well, because now we're going to go grab our our chicken and onions and garlic mixture. I'll show you here. So we got the eggs in there and that cheese in there, and that's definitely going to bind nice. Once that chicken gets in there. All right. So let's grab our chicken. I'm going to grab half at a time and mix it. Just really get that incorporated so it's not all clumpy. Oh, my word, that smells amazing. And unfortunately, you can't cook these until after you freeze them for an hour. Put them in the fridge after you roll them and freeze them for an hour. Of course, <laughs> you know me. I'm going to roll a couple and throw them right in the oven. I'm going to test that theory. Just a couple. And I'll let you know how they do compared to when I put them in the freezer. You know, I really should make the recipe first. A regular recipe before I double it to make sure I like it. But I, my thoughts are 99% of the time I like it and I don't want to have to do it all over again. Sorry, that's backwards. Finger looking good, right? And I threw that spoon in there, so I'm not mixing it with this. All right, my friends. Oh. The good thing is you can use a, a cookie scoop. Scoop it out and then roll it up. You need breadcrumbs too. And flour. <laughs> See now, when I was doing this recipe, I thought, wow, that's not bad. That the recipe's not bad. Of course you got your potatoes. With very little flour. Um, you got your cheeses. And then you have to dip it in the flour and breadcrumbs. So, I mean, if you're on a diet and you count that flour and breadcrumbs, hey. Yeah, see, I don't think these, I think they have to. Let me wash them. <laughs> I don't know if you control how many you take out. Oh, and that's what I was going to say because I don't want to. I don't want to deep fry them. I want to bake them to make them healthier. Because all this frying, I can feel it seeping out my skin. Sorry, guys. Before I go any further, I have to put this cheese away. I don't want it sitting out. And don't you know, I had to do all that. Where's the cats when you need them? I don't think they need the cheese. I got like five or six strands of cheese on the floor. 30 second roll. I haven't washed my floors in God, a good week. I ain't picking it up. <laughs> Lord knows I need to wash my floors. These bags are amazing, by the way. I've been using them in nine months. They freeze great, too. But I tell you what, getting these bad dogs open sometimes out of the freezer is not easy. Um, I think I'm going to add a little bit more cheese, too, now that I think about it. 
I'm going to add a handful of each. Nah, I'll just add it of this because my oven's closed. <laughs> okay, guys. Oil your hands. I have a cookie scoop, and I scooped it, and I'm going to just roll these into balls. See, those are really soft. And I'm going to put them on my cookie sheet. I'm going to use this one. My parchment. Because otherwise, this will stick to you. <laughs> I was going to do them into logs, but these are just as easy. When they come out, you can roll them a little bit better. But it's got, now I see why um, you have to freeze them. And instead of putting oil on the pan, I put parchment paper. Just as easy to get off. <laughs> now I have to go make room in my freezer. Okay, I'm going to do these. And, oh, hang on. I didn't wash my little pan yet. I'm going to put some of these in the oven right now. I'm just going to roll them. Um, yeah, I'll do the right way. I'll roll them in the um, flour and panko because I like panko, I like crispy. I'll roll them in that and then I'll, and the egg, white. And when I'm done with all this, those will be done and I'll be back. Look, friends, look how easy this is. You know, as far as rolling them, oops, I dropped some. I literally just go like that, and that one wasn't a really full one, but I overfill this and literally just roll it as I put it on this pan, and that's plenty. Because once they come out, then you can re-roll if you need to. Look at all the stuff I have left. Another one. Don't make a double recipe unless you have a big family because this is a lot. Let me fill this pan and I'm going to show you even what I have left. Left. Oops, that one's not very round. That's all right. We'll be one when I'm done. Now, look at this. This is a big pan, too. So, there you have that. Uh, I think a single recipe on this also would be awesome. Let me go put these in the freezer, get the rest of them rolled, and I'll let you see those when they come out, if they work. Okay, friends. Holy mackerel. So, I did two of them in the oven. I'm just going to take a little bit of this honey mustard. Look at this. Cheese, is, cheese was starting to seep out. Everything was cooked besides the eggs. It's been in there. I did 15 minutes because I did five, five, no. Yeah, about 15 minutes. Now I'm going to try it with some honey mustard. I don't know what the heck you eat these with. Mmm. Wow, those have a really good flavor. I didn't expect that. It's nice and crispy on the outside. But, let me show you this. And I'm wondering if this is why they deep fry them. The inside is kind of mushy. I mean, of course, because it's, see, oops, <laughs> see how it's mushy. It's not bad. That's just the mashed potatoes. And, of course, I used instant mashed potatoes. But this has a really good flavor. 
Oh, kok ya? There's 35 of them now. And the other sheet has about 35 of them on it. Plus these two. I only cooked two. See, look at how the cheese comes out. So, I'm going to give that to Maurice and see how he likes it. They can be oven fried and not deep fried because those are good. And I think once it cools down a little bit, um, it'll firm up a little more, the mashed potatoes. Now, it could be if you use regular potatoes. Back is struggling today again. Maybe that keeps it firmer. But those are really good. So they got a thumbs up from me. Oops. Stuck my finger right in there. So that's another plus, guys. Um, I'm not going to end this here. I'm going to attempt as much as I don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do a small pan of oil and deep fry a few of them just to see how they come out so that I can show you the deep fried also and see if it makes a difference with the inside. Excuse me. But yeah, those are really good. And other than the prep for them and not having ever made this recipe, that was a fairly easy recipe too, especially seeing I used my ugly chicken um so i didn't have to cook the chicken breasts oh and and that's another thing because this recipe calls for two um pieces of chicken so if you cook your chicken you know how it's dry mine's not dry because i had it soaking in that its original juice so my jute so maybe had i used less of my chicken broth because I used the chicken that sat in that broth and it was all moist. I mean, super moist. So maybe it added a little bit more. I don't know, but they're good. And I just tested the ones that are in the freezer and they're firming up quite a bit. So let's see, I'll be back. Hey friends, how many videos have you watched of chefs, actual chefs? showing you different meals and how to do things and whatnot. But you never see bloopers that they do on there. Well, I'm going to show you exactly what not to do that they never tell you. And I'm telling you, don't have kids around when you're frying. You know, they're always down at your legs or whatever. Put a gate in the room or something because anything could happen. And I'm going to show you in the next clip exactly what could happen. So please be very careful and don't do what I did. <laughs> Yikes. last clip this is after they just came out of the oven I put them in for oh I think it was 10 minutes and then I flipped them and I put them for another 10 minutes and this is what they came out for uh, to be baked and those look delicious <laughs> don't they look at the cheese just oozing out of them and they're crispy on both sides. They came out amazing. I'd try one. Let me see. I'll try one of these. Ah, uh, maybe not. Mmm. Mmm. That's way too hot. But this piece of cheese sitting here is just calling my name. Yep, and it's saying, I'm burning your fingers, I'm going to burn your mouth, too. So I'm going to leave it right there. Anyway, there you have it, my friends. 
don't put cold things in oil. I'm going to try to voice over on the three clips that didn't come out because my thing on my arm died and I didn't know it and I wasn't checking my videos. So three clips of them, of the fried ones. Um, don't have kids around please when there's hot oil in your kitchen because that could have been a mess. My rug's in the in the washing machine now from when I took it over to the sink to let the oil go in there. Of course now it's some of it's down my drain which isn't too smart either but I'd rather clean it out of that than off my stove again like I had to. Um, and yeah these came out really good. Let's see. That's that piece gotta be cool enough now. Mm. The extra cheese. I'll let you know in the comments below or in where my recipe is how they held up inside if they were mushy once they cool down a little bit. But they taste amazing. So give it a try. In the oven. Spray the top of them. And, and actually, you don't even have to because when I flipped them over, I didn't spray the bottoms of them. And they came out just as crispy. So skip the spray. Save a step. Oh, and this is what's for dinner. <laughs> now that these took me all day doing, <laughs> only because they were in the freezer for a couple hours. It's 425 now. That's homemade shake and bake from Little Village Homestead. Wonderful recipe. Yeah, like I said, wonderful recipe. Um, if you're not subscribed to her, go subscribe. She's awesome. She puts out some amazing, amazing recipes. I've tried quite a few of them. Her brownies, fantastic. Uh, next time I make them, I still have like eight of them in the freezer. I moved them around today. Um, I'm going to add some either chocolate chips or nuts to them just for something different, but they're amazing. Anyway, guys. Ciao. I'll see you later. Peace out. There you have it, my friends. They're all done. They're cooled. Let's check now. Let's see how they taste on the inside, if they firmed up. Perfect. They're still mashed potato-y, if that's the word. But those are yummy. Mmm, all this taste test and I'm not going to be able to eat dinner. That's done now. That was my beeper. Have a good night, guys, friends. Thanks for being here. Sorry this is so long, but it was worth it if you learned anything from it. I'll see you again sooner or later. Peace out.